morning. What a wonderful room full of energetic, excited people we have today. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. This is fantastic. Uh, my name is Kelly Cutler, for anyone who doesn't know me. Uh, my partner, Ben Swartz, is here as well. Hello. Um, and as I mentioned, several of the Marcel Media folks are, are here wandering around, so feel free to say hi to them and ask them for coffee and donuts. They're happy to oblige. Um, I'm going to start this morning by talking about conversion rate optimization, which is a very exciting uh, new service that Marcel Media is sort of diving into with some of our clients. And the reason that we are excited about it is because We've been in this business for almost nine years now. And when we very first started in 2003, it was all about Yahoo search. For those of you that remember those days, it was Overture. Um, nobody even knew who Google was really at that point in time. Um, Google was sort of just getting into the, the search market. Eventually, we were working with paid search with Google and Yahoo. And then around 05, 06, we started getting more into SEO. And uh, in the last couple of years, more into social media marketing. But what we really never looked at was sort of beyond just driving the traffic to the website, converting that traffic into a customer or a lead or whatever it was that we wanted that customer to sort of do once they got to the website. We were so focused on just driving traffic to the website. So again, you know, paid search and SEO are great for that. Facebook ads, uh, social media, all of those different channels are terrific for driving people to the website, but what we really got excited about over the last couple of years is how do we take those people once they get to the website and make them do the things that we want them to do. So that being said, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is a conversion. Um, and when we talk about conversion rate optimization, it's all about that conversion point. Conversions can be many different things within your website. So if you think about your website and you think about all of the different things that people can do when they arrive there. Sales probably comes to a lot of our minds, right? We want to sell them something. We not want to get their credit card information. We want them to buy something. So sales can certainly be a conversion point. But for a lot of us, it's not. It's not always a sale. It's other things. Do I want to build my newsletter database? Do I want to uh, get people to download a white paper that we've written? Do I want people to watch a YouTube video or participate in some other multimedia like photos or, or different things that I've got posted on my website? Do I want people to retweet my, com my uh, content if they're using Twitter? Do we want them to like me on Facebook? These are all conversion points. So the first step when, when you're thinking about conversion rate optimization is identifying what those conversion points are uh, and how those can be impacted from the way that your website is set up. So what is conversion rate optimization? We are really lacking acronyms lately in our business. As all of you probably know, PPC is just like so 2004. SEO is like so 2006. So we need a new one. So that's where CRO really comes from. Um, conversion rate optimization is a new way to look at online marketing. And again, it's, it's going beyond just driving traffic to the website and looking at how we take those visitors and we get them to take the actions that we want them to take. What are the benefits of conversion rate optimization? Well, there are many. Um, really, the conversation begins at what are the business goals? And I think a, a lot of the people in this room have probably heard us ask that question many, many times. If you have worked with Marcel Media in the past, uh, we like to badger that question a lot. What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? And of course, sales may be at the end of that sort of funnel. Yeah, we want to sell more. We want to make more money, we want to increase revenue, you know, those types of things. But what needs to happen along that path to get to those sales? So we want to look at the website, we want to look at the business goals, then we want to look at how that pertains to the website. And then we want to establish a more engaged user base. So again, if you work with Marcel Media, we're constantly looking at your analytics, we're analyzing your key performance indicators, we're talking about the amount of time people spend on your website. We're talking about the bounce rate, how many people come to the site and leave right away. We're looking at all of those different factors to understand the user experience and how engaged the users are. And the more we can improve on those metrics, the better opportunity we have to convert some of those people into customers. So those are some of the benefits. And obviously, down that funnel, as we complete some of those conversion rate optimization goals, 
we're looking at increasing revenue and profits and ultimately generating more repeat business. So getting more people to come to the website and purchase something or convert in some way, and then also establishing our repeat customers in a pattern of allowing them to easily convert in a different way than they had been in the past. So what are some of the fundamentals? Well, again, the first thing is what's the objective of the website and what are the conversion mechanisms? So navigation is a big part of that. Is it easy for people to find what they're looking for when they come to the website? Uh, a lot of interesting uh, statistics and data are going on right now about how many people are using search when they come to a website. A lot of companies like Google and Amazon are sort of teaching us to use search when we land on a, a, a new website. Rather than having to navigate two, three, four, five, six clicks in to find what we're looking for, oftentimes we're going to just type that product or service into the search bar. So we want to look at those analytics. We want to understand what people are searching for when they come to our website. We want to understand how they're utilizing our navigation. Oftentimes, we'll see navigation not being used the way that we would have expected it to be used. And those are all key insights into how we want to improve the website to get the desired outcome, which is more conversions. So there are several different examples when you look at, at things like your navigation and how you can sort of adjust it to get better results. Simple things like the color scheme. Oftentimes, people will say, well, our website's you know, purple because our CEO loves purple. OK, great, but is that part of your brand? Is that part of what people are expecting when they come to the website? Are people clicking on the right things when they get to the website? Color can definitely play into that. Drop down navigation. Any way that you're using your navigation plays into your conversion rate. We try to keep it simple. It's very important that people are able to get where they want to go once they land on the website. And frequently, as simple as that sounds, it doesn't happen. Frequently, we see a path where someone is trying to perhaps get a conversion point of signing up for a class or enrolling for an event, something like that. People will come to the home page from a marketing campaign. From the home page, they sort of have to click on an events link. They'll get to a page that lists out multiple events. They then have to find the event that they're looking to register for. They click on that and they have to read through three big long paragraphs of information, then click on another link, and that finally takes them to a page where they can enroll. Oftentimes, if you're driving someone from a marketing campaign, they know they want to enroll. It's a lot easier to just drive them to the page where they can sign up or enroll for the class. So that's an example of how navigation can sometimes get in the way. And then we also think it's important to use a lot of links throughout the website. People expect to be able to click on logos and photos and pictures and different types of media throughout the website to get where they're trying to go. Another thing that we try to really look at within conversion rate optimization is the conversion process. So again, analyzing the steps that a user is taking uh, is going to be very important. So we talked about sort of that navigation piece and how that works. I'm going to show some examples of ways that analytics can help further identify how we can look at that information and make good decisions based on the different paths that people are taking when they get to the website. Design, again, we talked a little bit about colors, but also the way the page is laid out. And I'm actually going to show uh, a case study from one of our clients where the way the page was laid out had a big impact on the conversion rate. And we identified that, we had the data, and we made the recommendation, and we saw the results from that. And then development. So the IT guys in the room do have a part in this conversion rate optimization piece. If the site won't load quickly, if it loads very slowly, what are most people going to do? Leave. Exactly. Um, our patience level, I think, has gone down with the invent uh, of the internet, and I think that it will continue to go in that direction. Um, I think that people just want to be able to access the information they're looking for quickly. So if the site's not loading quickly because there are tons of images or or different things that are slowing it down, we're going to lose people. So site speed and page load speed can definitely negatively impact your conversion rate optimization strategy. So landing page optimization is a key part of conversion rate optimization. Probably a lot of people in the room have sort of heard the, the terms for landing page optimization, maybe even 
talked about it. Hopefully, if you're working with Marcel Media, this is not the first time you've heard the words landing page optimization. This is pretty important to us, particularly if you're working with us on a marketing campaign, because again, when you're doing a marketing campaign, you typically don't want to drive people to a home page and then sort of make them look for the information uh, that they were seeking. You want to drive them directly to what we would call a landing page. Landing pages are important for marketing campaigns, which would include anything like paid search, email, social media, display, SEO, um, anything, again, where you're utilizing something very uh, specific to drive people into the website. You want to give them that information when they get there. So with landing page optimization, we focus on some key areas. We look at messaging and call to action first. Call to action is really important. Um, we have seen very significant increases in results when we've made very, very small changes. Things like call now or email us today or start now, sign up now, contact us today. Those types of things are very different than uh, give us a try or you know, click here for more information, more passive types of language um, are typically not going to see as many conversions as a little bit more urgency. And there are ways to do it uh, with conversion rate optimization that are subtle. So if you're worried about having you know, blue light special type of language on your website and, and you know, worried about sort of the, the cheesy factor there, um, there are ways to do this that are not as um, you know, blue light special sounding, but still can give that sense of urgency to get people to act. And of course, this depends on, again, what that conversion is that you're looking for. So if you're selling something, that's different than if you're enrolling for a class or if you're downloading a white paper. And the call to action should match what that conversion point is. We also look at copy structure and layout. Um, this is very important, and I think a lot of people don't focus on this. I know that writing content for the web is, is you know, something that a lot of people in the room here are either doing on a regular basis or focused on or losing sleep at night about, right? This is a big, big area for all marketers that are, are interested in their website. How do we get the most you know, content on the site that's good, that's compelling, you know, that's interesting, that people will engage with? It has to be set up and formatted properly. People don't want to read big, long paragraphs of text when they're on the web. They really want to you know, give it to me fast, give it to me straight, let me look through bullet points, let me click on things, show me some pictures, break up the text a little bit. Very, very important uh, that writing for the web is, is treated as it should be, which is writing for the web, not for print, not for brochures, not for other types of, of media where people are maybe in a, a, a different sort of behavior pattern. So we look at that as well when it comes to landing pages. Offers and promotions, dynamic content, are we feeding people the information that they're looking for as they go through the process of, of the sales or, or the conversion that we're looking for them to do? Are we feeding them with the right information as, as they go through that path? Is it trustworthy? Are they on a site that they can trust? What have we done to ensure that this experience is safe? So things like trust seals are helpful. Uh, using secure networks for sales, obviously, is important. Um, identifying with your customers to make them feel that they are in a secure environment is important as well. And then emphasizing the benefits. So a lot of people are, are very focused on just price when it comes to landing pages and, and promoting things on the web. We think it's also very important to look at emphasizing those benefits that you are providing. Why should you know, why should I care about this product or this service? Well, it's because we've you know, been doing this for a long time. We have subject matter experts. We have information that's valuable. You know, we will be you know, engaged with you through, through the long haul. We have customer service people that will be available to work with you. Whatever those different benefits are, your salespeople are probably talking about those when they're out meeting with customers. But a lot of times forgetting, we're forgetting to utilize that on the web as well.